The Tea Party came to Washington today to deliver a message to congressional Republicans. Don't compromise. Now, I'm not talking about five billion or six billion or ten billion. I'm talking about a hundred billion or more. That's just the start of it. The Tea Party is made up of thousands of loosely aligned groups around the country with one shared goal, cutting the size and influence of government. Spending money, hey, let printing me do money, and so for a politician. the money is worth, I'm take worthless. Seconds yeah. It hasn't yeah. happened yet, you know but what? it's We've going that way. They were a powerful force in last November's election. Senators Marco Rubio, Mike Lee, and Rand Paul are just a few of the freshman politicians who owe their victories to the Tea Party. Tonight, there's a Tea Party tidal wave, and we're sending a message to them. While many Tea Party groups strive to make themselves say? heard in Washington, in Ohio there's a new focus, local politics. If you can't elect a township trustee or a school board member, how are you going to elect a president of the United States? The Ohio Liberty Council is an umbrella organization of 65 Tea Party and other activist groups from around the state. In March, it held an all-day strategy meeting at the Ohio State University campus. We have a unique responsibility in Ohio. I mean, it, it just has to be clear to everyone. This is where the fate of our nation will be decided. So you need to take that responsibility seriously. You're going door to door to your neighborhoods, your members are talking to their neighbors, and they're trusting you to have good advice, to have vetted candidates, and to have a reason to back somebody. And then they're going to vote for that trustee, they're going to vote for that school board member, they're going to vote for that mayor, they're going to vote for that city council member. Your neighbor has a conversation with you and it's very substantive, there's nothing more powerful than that conversation. All of our focus is going to be state-based because we feel that D.C. is just, it's not going to go too many places too fast right now. We wanted to create smaller groups and not have one large Columbus Tea Party, but have several smaller groups, eventually break those down into neighborhoods, have block captains. So if any message needed to get out, send it out to one person, they had no 10 people on the street, and therefore we could start building that way. You saw a 2 to 3 percent bump for them relative to how they did in the rest of the county. We're putting together a designated contact in every federal congressional district and every state house and state senate district across the state of Ohio. And you've seen the effect of that. A good example is Senate Bill 5 here in Ohio, which is collective bargaining reform for public unions. Two key senatorial votes flipped because of the pressure we were able to bring. Ohio has at least one local politician with an outsized influence on the national stage. That's House Speaker John Boehner. As GOP minority leader under George W. Bush, Boehner rubber-stamped almost every initiative to expand the scope and size of the federal government. Speaker Boehner lives about half a mile from my house. He lives, um, he goes to our church, he's a member of our church, I haven't ever seen him there. But Every couple of weeks we meet with um, a member of his staff, we sit down, we have drinks, and we talk about, this is what we're hearing from our members. One of our biggest issues the last time we met was on the debt ceiling uh, that they're going to try to raise in the next next couple of weeks, I think in April, they need to raise the debt ceiling again. And we really, really strongly oppose the raising of the debt ceiling. So our next step is to call, um, <laughs> to call the donors to Mr. Boehner and just say, you know, you've been a supporter of Mr. Boehner in the past. I'm not, I'm not sure if you support him on this issue. The sole purpose of a, a political party is to get someone elected. That's it. George Bush's presidency got me involved with the Tea Party. The Patriot Act and Medicare Part D coming to debate and then close, you know, as, as you had a Republican Congress kind of doing all these things that were really just, you know, what I considered horrible legislation. That's why they don't care what that Republican believes. Once you're Republican, their job is to get that person elected, and that frustrates us. I use this term, I'm a pragmatic libertarian. I could probably come to common ground with people between you know, half and all the time. It's not a monolithic view of anything. The most important issue for me personally is Second Amendment rights. That doesn't mean that I don't work on other things. I believe that, that a marriage is between a man and a woman. And I believe that that marriage then, that vow in front of uh, God, uh, does present some, definitely some challenges, but also some benefit. Why are people so against their <laughs> show them all. We'll have the conversation later, just because it's pretty off topic, but we'll all have personal I just opinions. Tired of him yeah, I may be one of those people. <laughs> all I'm looking for with those individuals who make up part of the Tea Party movement, not all of it, but part of the Tea Party movement that are on that Christian right, where do we share common ground?
because fiscal issues are agnostic, anyone can join you. Two plus two equals four in any language and anywhere on the earth is equals two plus two equals four. If we stick to that, the social issues will take care of themselves. This cannot be done from any kind of a top of a pyramid. It has to be citizen engagement that is you dealing with your local areas first and taking the stand in your backyard. The Tea Party movement hasn't done anything that's been oh my gosh, we've changed American politics permanently, the world is a better place. No, what it did a really good job of doing was changing a narrative. It opened up a, a very common conversation um, for America to talk about you know, the three big things we focus on, are limited government, fiscal responsibility, and free markets. So the fact that that conversation hadn't been had in so long and that this sort of populist uprising called the Tea Party helped to make that happen, great. Though I, don't, I have no expectation of anything coming out of Congress that's going to be very close to what I, I would like to see happen. But we can have a greater degree um, of effect at the state level, and that's where we're hoping to play a really, really big role.